last August we had a once in a generational event. In 2016, we thought we had a once in a generation uh, event. Um, this happens far too often, um, but the reality is uh, we've got to take care of it uh, right now. And I want to thank the governor for so quickly responding. Uh, your team were right in touch with us on Friday, right when everything was going on, and uh, you were right there with us. The governor, uh, Secretary Sandy and his team, uh, uh, Secretary Riston and uh, Highways, uh, Department of Transportation, all were reaching out to us. We had uh, Senator Capito and Senator Manchin in, in touch with us. They all reached out. That's what West Virginians do. We reach out to be able to stand with one another. And uh, Governor, thank you so very much for uh, assuring us that you're standing right, right by us. And uh, thank you for taking time to come in today to be able to see what we have to deal with. Well, let, let me let me just talk to you as I always would, just in down home terms. Your mayor, all these great people behind me, all of you, everybody's really worked really hard here. And no matter what we've done, it's still not enough. I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, I could go back to 2016 and, and way back further than that. You know, you drive by home after home after home and all their possessions, all their memories, all their life is in a pile out in the middle of the road. And then an inloader comes along and picks it up and throws it in the back of a truck and off it goes. I mean, it's surely tragic beyond belief when we lose lives. But is it not tragic almost to that level to see all the memories, everything just gone? Now, reality is just this. I mean, just look, look at this incredible park and look at that little innocent, totally innocent string. It seems impossible, impossible. But let me just let me just tell you just this: five inches of rain in a in a short period of time in West Virginia can cause tragedy. That's all there is to it. But this could have been way worse. I mean, what if we'd have gotten 11 inches of rain? I, like I was telling the mayor, you know, I'm, I'm a construction guy. You know, I, I know this stuff, you know, and uh, I, I mean, I'm not a politician. I'm, I'm a construction guy. This is level land. Do you, do you realize that if this were, if this were in McDowell County and the mountains were on both sides and there was houses, you know, in an area of, of 100 feet on both sides, and the water was coming down through there, that's tragic, super tragic. But look how far this water went. And look at the magnitude of just really what we were dealing with right here. I mean, it it's really significant of just how badly this needs to be fixed. I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, you, you are not only endangering life but in and in taking away people all their possessions but if there were ever a time and i just got through telling the mayor this if there were ever a time with the the arp money so you know with with how the state's doing with how how we're doing in 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 west virginia today if there were ever a time now's the time Now's the time that we need the agencies to all pull the rope together and repair as much as we possibly can and prevent as much as we possibly can. So at the end of the day, you know, I know and I and and, and I know from the very I mean, I'm I, I put out the, the state of preparedness. We knew what was coming. We didn't know how bad it would be. And we've seen this over and over. And we live in paradise, and this is absolutely not going to stop. But we can make it better. 
we really can make it better. And do we not have an obligation to make it better? Well, of course we do. You know, so let's just get at it. Now, can we make it better tomorrow? No. But can we make it better now for for years and years and years to come? Yes, we can. So, uh, so I, I would just say this, you know, anything and everything I can do, I, you know, right off the get-go, you know, we put emergency management, we put, you know, Homeland Security, we put Highway Department, we put everything. It's not enough. I mean, it's still just not enough. And, and so we got to do more. That's all there is to it. And so that's what I, 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 would, I would tell you. I, and, and you know me well enough to know I don't blow smoke at anybody. I don't have time to do it. I just don't do it. You know, we ran into two fellows up there, you know, we're talking and everything. That's exactly what I told them. They've seen people come through and just give them lip service. What we need to always do is not do that. We don't need to do that. And so it's tragic, it's terrible. Praise the Lord, there wasn't a ton, a ton of people that we lost. You know, there's, there's, there's heartbreak and, and all over the place, but uh, we can fix this. We can fix it. And, uh, and now's the time, right now's the time. There were individuals that were asking what could be expecting and the governor pointing pointed it out this way. He said, today we're assessing, uh, give him, I won't say how many hours, but plans are going to be announced as to how we might be able to proceed, but you can't do it unless uh, you come in and eyeball it. And this is, uh, this quickly, Governor, we appreciate you taking time to be with us uh, today so that we can evaluate this and, and put some plans in place. Look, I'm, 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 uh, I'm honored to be here. You know, uh, I, I go, I, you know, it, it, it brings back a lot of horror stories to tell you the truth. But uh, I can't tell you the mud that I waited in 2016. And every day we looked and looked and looked for a little 14 year old girl that we found six miles or so downstream that we looked for for six weeks before we found her. Her name was Michaela Phillips. And uh, and so, praise the Lord, we haven't, we haven't had a lot, a lot, a lot of that. You remember hearing over in the Enslow Park area of a five-day-old baby yeah. needing to be rescued out. I mean, this, five, is, this is real. Five-day-old baby that we really were struggling to get to with 911 and everything. And the neighbors took her to higher ground. Took her up the hillside. You know, once again, this is how West Virginians are. Take care of one another. As we made our way through on Saturday and, and Sunday, everywhere you went, you saw individuals who I knew and I was asking, I didn't know you live here, and said, no, we don't live here. We're here to help our neighbors. This is what people in Huntington are like and what people throughout West Virginia are. are like. That's who we are. Yeah. Let me tell you one more thing. And, and this this doesn't really have a thing in the world much to do with this, but this is just, this is who we are. I mean, think about this. You know, I coach basketball and the guy that was running the scoreboard for us for years and years and years, his name's Ronnie Scott, okay? Ronnie, the water was coming up, just like here. And Ronnie's wife said, honey, you get the kids and get the car to high ground, or, or get the kids to high ground, and I'll get the other car and I'll get out of here and I'll get the dog. Well, she went back to get the dog and, and all of a sudden there was a problem with getting the dog and everything. And then when she went back out of the house, the water was too high, she couldn't get the car out of there. So she went back in the house. Ronnie didn't have any idea where she was. So he called, you know, she called him. And she said, Ronnie, I can't get out of the house now. The water's up and everything. And the water's coming up on the front, front of the, the bottom floor of the house. Well, he's climbing up the hill and it's still pouring the rain and everything. And he's out there with the kids and all that kind of stuff. And he's climbing up on the hill to try to get to where he can see the house. Well, anyway, the next call comes 
and she says, Ronnie, I'm in the attic and I smell gas. And now he's standing up on the hill and all of a sudden a titanic explosion goes off and she's blown out through the roof of the house into a tree. 70% burns on her body and three days later she's dead. The house looks like you totally just leveled the house completely. I'm telling you, this is tough stuff. That's all there is to it. And so, anything and everything that I can do to help, I'm gonna try. That's all there is to it. Any questions? Do we have an estimate of how many um, houses have been impacted? Last I heard was well over a hundred, and I think it's a lot more than that just because you have just in Huntington, okay. uh, you have Enslow Park, mm -hmm. uh, that entire area, and then you come down Enslow Boulevard um, all the way down to Sixth uh, or Seventh Street West. So uh, where Kinetic Park begins and where everything at Hal Greer Boulevard, that's thirty plus. Well, let's, let's count it, 16 plus another, it's about 20, 23, 25 blocks. And as the governor pointed out, it's, it's not a confined space. It's spread out a couple of blocks even. And, uh, uh, and I'm, I'm certain that there's more, I'm, not, I'm certain there's more than 100, but the last I heard was 100 plus. What's the status of like FEMA's involvement? We expect them to be coming in and I, I think I think that what's being done right now is an assessment to the magnitude you've got to reach you've got to reach a level of magnitude for them to come mm -hmm. but we're trying like crazy to reach that level of magnitude to where they come so what, you know, what can residents do to help is there a number that they can call to inform someone that I'm included in this Secretary Sandy did you hear the question Right now, if you have issues, call the mayor's office and uh, and be able to register with them. Once FEMA makes some decisions, then our, the governor's <laughs> office and our office will be working together to to uh, coordinate our our response in, in that regard. What's most important right now is that we can't make promises as to what FEMA is going to be uh, doing. Take pictures of. The damaged areas take pictures of the pile of debris. Uh, keep any receipts that that you uh, that you have of the work that has been done. If you do those things, then you're going to be prepared. It's helpful that the uh, American Red Cross is here, also assessing. I, I was told yesterday that they expect to be in town later in the week, um, possibly as as early as Tuesday or Wednesday tomorrow or Wednesday. Um, but the main thing is right now, what you do until we actually get word from the federal agencies is uh, document, document, document. Pictures, receipts, and everything that you can. And then hopefully we'll be able to have more to say in the next day or two. Mayor, I don't know if you or the governor can answer this question, but uh, you had alluded to some plans that uh, they were going to be drawn up to fix this so this doesn't happen again. What can you tell us about what the plans are what you well it's too early for plans but understand when we are in these operations we're always evaluating and assessing what more we need to, to, to do uh, what's very clear to me is that we need to have uh, a review to determine what would we need to design to make sure that we can deal with something like this because what we have done in Huntington and over the last 80 years is prepared to how do we handle the water from the Ohio River and be able to, to, to manage that. Uh, all of our systems in that regard have worked quite well. But if we're talking on the outside of the flood wall, what steps do we need to take to try to make sure that we have med mitigation in place for water that's occurring along the, the, the Four Pole Creek watershed? Keep this in mind. Um, I don't have the sheet in front of me, but I think uh, Brian Chambers will be delivering to you. The watershed for um, the watershed for Four Pole Creek. You don't got to really look at this. this the water, the watershed for Four Pole Creek, 
is bigger than all of Huntington nearly by double. So right in this area here, all comes into this little stream, this right here. Then over in this area, it, it, it empties into this area of Four Pole Creek down near the Ohio River. Again, what we need to evaluate is that if this is becoming the so-called new normal that is occurring more and more, this didn't happen. Last time we had something of this nature was 30 years ago and Memorial Day 1990 was at this breadth, but then 2016 we had problems over at Enslow Park. Uh, just last August we had problems on 3rd Avenue and 5th Avenue. What we have to do is make an evaluation if it's the river isn't rising so high during a flash flood what do we need to do to be able to respond to it immediately because everything is built keep in mind as this water started coming up it came up so fast the river the ohio river didn't come up i'm getting into the weeds but the ohio river it has a lagging effect it comes up later well by the time the the river came up at a stage where we start closing off uh, the, the gates and then start pumping out, well, our water had already receded. We need to evaluate, do we need to do something to be able to take care of the new normal and be prepared to respond to that? Steve, can I add something? Matt Rohrbach from the House of Delegates. The one thing I'll add to that is the House of Delegates, with the governor's help, approved the flood wall for Milton. Uh, and uh, that's being designed by our federal partners. So I work to work with our federal partners at the Corps of Engineers, figure out what can be done as far as protection and mitigation, and then try to get something through the legislature to fund it, which I'm sure the, the governor, it's just what the governor's talking about and the mayor's talking about. So it all is gonna revolve on getting a plan and then work to get the funding. Well, the fortunate thing is we have a partnership here. And uh, I know I can depend upon the governor, and the governor knows that all it takes is one call, and we're and we're connected. Right down through here, okay? And see, it goes this way. So all of this goes into twelve four pole going this way. All of this area, which is smaller, it goes into this creek, which flows into four pole right here, and it goes right down in here to a pumping station. Now, the pumping station is a thousand years old, 80 years old or something like that. And, and that's a, that could be a potential bottleneck right there. But this area up here has got to have some kind of flood control structure built. That's all there is to it. Because this area, this footprint is so big that when it rains, you're going to have a magnitude of water here that this little creek can't handle it. You've got to have a flood control structure up here and you've got to have the rehabilitation or the replacement of this pump down here to be able to solve this issue in my opinion. Now, from the standpoint of we want to continue to welcome people to come and, and, and help them be able to build more and do more. From the standpoint of FEMA, we absolutely need to try to work as hard as we can to qualify these folks for FEMA right now. And from the standpoint of the House and the Senate and, and all of us in government, we want to absolutely, you know, backdrop and help in any way we possibly can on that side. But to me, the steps of this are the Corps engineers and everything looking at a flood control structure here and doing something to reevaluate maybe the replacement of this pumping station down here and from the standpoint of beyond that, get these people qualified for FEMA if that's possible. And I don't know exactly if that's possible or not. And then on top of that, all of us together, the mayor, the governor, the house, the Senate, all of us together pulling the rope to try to do anything and everything we can with dollars that we have available to try to help these folks. That's what needs done. Kelsey, I mean, as he pointed out, this area right here, that's all outside of the city. So the city has yeah. no control over that, but it all comes in and is affecting the, the city. This is and there's what, folks, there's folks right here 
that we're not able to help city-wise that need our help too. But if you can just look, my hand's a big hand, but that that is the footprint that's coming into four pole that is absolutely right where we're at. This has got to have some kind of emergency flood control structure. It has to. And then this is four pole. This area right here is also coming in right at that point that infects you down here from your pumping station standpoint. Look, I may not have the exact answer, but this is what I do. I mean, for God's sake, it's living. That, you've got to have, I don't mean build a lake, but you've got to have some structure that takes the overload off of this creek in case in, in, in times of emergency. You have to. I mean, that's all there is to it. We've got to figure a way to do that. Let's build on one thing that the governor said. Obviously, we want development to, to occur. We want development all over the state of West Virginia. But in order for us to have the development that we know that we want, that we deserve, that we also have to make sure that we have the capacity in place to be able to prepare for that. So it's the city, certainly the state, but the county commissioners are here and we're working hard with the county commissioners on this. Everybody's got, everybody has to come together in collaboration, cooperation, um, to make sure that we have these things. And uh, what this has done, what we experienced over the weekend, was really just a magnifying glass on that we still have work to, to do. And just because it wasn't needed 80 years ago, we need what we have, the opportunity is with the resources that are coming now beyond FEMA, we have the opportunity to be able to prepare ourselves for the next 80 years and uh, we're committed to do that. As you were touring today, I know it's obviously not a 2016 type scenario, but what did you see in the eyes of people as they were going through their belongings that you talked about earlier? Well, if you want, and again, I don't know if any way to tell you anything but the truth, but you know, you see, you see the goodness of West Virginia so much. I mean, you see neighbors that are helping neighbors right up there. And I stopped, I stopped absolutely and yelled across the window. You see people thanking us for yeah. trying to help out. I mean, and I said, it took, it takes so much courage, it's unbelievable. You know, they're digging out all their possessions, all their house, don't know what in the world to do, have suffered through the toughest time imaginable, and they're thanking us. You know, what kind of, what kind of people do that? Us, West Virginia, that's what you see. You see, you always see it. You see neighbors helping neighbors and everything. And, and before I quit talking, I, I gotta tell you this. The mayor said, document, document, document. You can't have too many records. Absolutely, keep track of your time. T keep track of your neighbor's time. Keep track of every single thing because it'll really come, it'll really be important when this is all all cleaned up and everything. Just absolutely do all that. Governor? Two, two words described, determination and desperation. That's why we're here. I'm a, I'm a pastor, we, I pastor a church just out of city limits. Right. Uh, this creek runs past our church. Our church is a choke point. Since they started the construction on that road, and now it's finished, we had never, we've been there since 1975, we had never experienced flooding uh, from the creek. It, it, other ways, a little bit of water may be coming in, uh, but never the creek rising. Right. Could that have had anything to do with it? And my second question, should they should we be considering new flood zone areas now because it seems like this might be a, as the mayor said a new norm well to answer your question you know I, i'm not i'm not the end all do all expert i'm just a construction guy that you happen to elect as, as the governor you know but but with all that being said you know 80 years ago we didn't have this pavement right here and this pavement accelerates that water, you know, and we've got to live here too. And so as we develop and everything, 
just like this beautiful lady just said, as we develop, you know, there's more and more and more potential for more and more and more difficulties. And that's where the, that's where the great minds, the great engineering minds and everything that we have need to solve the riddle. I mean, they need to solve this riddle, you know, and uh, I don't profess to be that engineer, you know, but I'm, I'm just, the best thing I could possibly tell you is all of us need to be hands on deck. All of us, all the agencies, everybody needs to say, now's the time. It, w it would have been better if we'd have done, now would have been the time five years ago or, or eight years, we didn't have any money. You know, in all honesty, even <coughs> if people would have said, now's the time then, they couldn't have done anything. Now is the time, you know, and so all of us, all of our agencies need to really, really get after it. That's just all there is to it. One thing now, that we've learned in the years that he's been in office and I've been in office is that we have talent hiding in plain sight in our communities and calling upon them, collaboration in, in, in that regard. It's amazing what happens when brilliant minds come together. And I'm not talking about these two brilliant minds. Within the community, we're able to identify ways of being able to address this. Um, I do believe that awful things can turn into something. You're a pastor, all things work together for good. Um, we don't want this to happen, but how do we turn this into something uh, positive? That's why we're here today and I trust and I have absolute faith that we, that we will turn this into something that allows us to grow the economy, but also make sure that we're protecting our property. Anybody else? Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Governor. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it.